Hey everybody, you are tuning in to the Canary Kai News Talk Live Team Pre-Stream. You did it. You're here. We're here. We're here together. We got a great show for you today, of course. Oh, big news. All the big news in the world, folks. All the big news you could possibly want. And you're welcome. We will cover that big news, but also you're welcome. There's other things to pay attention to. Uh, so we're excited to get the show started. Not as early as we had hoped, but uh, not as late as we have been in the past. Uh, just a quick reminder, head on over to CanaryCry.party. CanaryCry.party. Over there, we've got... Uh, oh, sh look, folks, look to your left, look to your right. Both of those people have joined the Canary Cry newsletter. And probably, at least one of them, uh, is getting our text message alerts. So why don't you uh, do that as well? At canarycry.party, you can uh, find the sign up for our text message alerts as well as our newsletter. Now, here's the thing. Newsletter is a very boring word, okay? I, I get it. I wouldn't sign up to a newsletter. So why don't we name this something else? It's a... Uh, 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 pu public publication of extraordinary content. That's what it is. Uh, publication of extraordinary content. You can find that over at canarycry.party. Uh, we just send out three emails a week right before uh, each of our episodes. But look, it's not just an alert. There's also lots of good stuff in there. Not only do you get fun things like the art from every episode, you also get the upcoming meetups sent straight to your uh, mailbox there. You also get all the sources. The sausage, sor sausage, sausage. You ever wonder how the sausage is made? Well, join the newsletter <laughs> over at CanaryCry.party. Lots of good stuff there. I highly recommend you go sign up. Um, also, if if in the eventuality, when the eventuality of us getting suspended or blocked or kicked off some platform, uh, you will we will let you know there, so you're not left waiting, waiting by the phone, waiting for your favorite podcast to start. Okay, well we're gonna get the show started here, folks. Thank you very much. Stay hydrated. Uh, let's -a go. The world is getting crazier. People are acting more and more insane. The end of the world is tomorrow. 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 See, there's only one thing to do when the world is falling apart. Listen to Basil and Gons as they discuss this week's news and events through the lens of Bible prophecy. You are listening to Canary Cry News Talk. You're listening to Canary Cry News Talk. Today is September 9th, 2022. We are live to tape on episode 532. And today, Dragon Queen. And we're signing on from off the grid, Razzle Dazzle. I'm your best buddy, Basil. And my name is Gons, your favorite Asian provocateur for Christ, a.k.a. the Cabana Boy. Live from a cyclonic California. Here to serve you a podcast that brings you the best news, which is the gospel message of Jesus Christ, while reporting egregious with a well-rounded, biblically grounded take on world events. And today's immersion phenomena, it's going to be biblical, Basil, literally mm. and metaphorically. Mm. Biblical. Indubitably. 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 Mm. All right. Well, we should probably just jump right into it because we've got yeah. lots of stuff to cover. Yeah. Uh, but first, let me give you a rundown, baby. Run it down. 
Okay. First, we're going to be starting off with your new and improved virtual reality dystopian headset. It does go on your head, but not where you think. Uh, Then we'll be checking in with Flippy, who is taking control. That's right. Legal control, baby, of the, uh, well, the economics, the corporations going on in the metaverse there. And then in our topic one, of course, we'll be talking about Queen Elizabeth II, uh, her passing but most importantly, how the media is reacting and all of the various twists and turns that are available to any discerning individual trying uh, to, oh, just live their life uh, and how the thoughts and prayers for the Queen's family are uh, being presented to us, presented being a polite way to say shoved up our noses. Uh, we'll then be checking in with Liz Truss. Is there a connection? I don't know. I'm not saying anything. There are some coincidental timing issues that we need to discuss. And then, of course, uh, a little dip into the mainstream media and their, well, blatant admission that they are here to steer the hearts and minds of individuals and reporting facts is of secondary importance. Uh, then we'll be getting into the COVID, the whack gene, the monkeypox, an excellent breakdown of how uh, the monkeypox vaccine is continuing to be the main focus of uh, the government's, I don't know, just the government, I guess, and some very very important things to know uh, for you and your loved ones. And then at the end, of course, checking in with Antarctica. What does it have to do with anything? You have to stick around to find out. Uh, but first, Gons, our lead story. Welcome to the Metaverse. Oh, yeah, Basil. You know, listeners may not know, but viewers know that you have a VR headset on for, Indeed. I don't know, three years in a, like three years without taking it off ever, I think. is what <laughs> So you're, you're there's, living there's in the no, There's no video evidence of me not wearing the, the VR headset. That's that is true. a true statement, at least uh, through this channel mm-hmm. here. But you may need to add a piece of gear to your paraphernalia. I don't oh, know good. what to call it. Yeah, that's just what I need. Another piece of gear. This, just please tell me. Yeah, hold on. I have a little. Uh, oh no! Uh, of course, I try to fix it, and it doesn't work. Give me oh, one no. second. Give me like thir- give me like fifteen seconds, and I'll fix something, and, I, and then I'll. Okay. Yeah. Do 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 do. Taking a little break at the top of the show. Things were going great. There Things go. were going we're smooth. We're Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gizmodo. For those of you viewing, you knew what I had to do. Uh, Gizmodo. Headline, bizarre muzzle microphone keeps your mouth in the metaverse. Mm. That's right. And keep keep that <laughs> mouth in the metaverse. Keep it in the metaverse. Yikes. And I got to say, they have a photo at the top here. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, one of those pictures that has kind of a diagonal strike with uh, different scenes, uh, three different people. Well, the first mm. person's wearing a VR headset. And, of course, the a similar device that goes around the mouth. So he's doubled up there. Uh, and the next one's got a young lady just holding the thing up to her mouth. And then a third person with some uh, headphones and also When you say thing, for, for the listener's yes. sake, <laughs> yes. it, is, it, is, it looks like a mini VR headset. Yeah. Imagine it. Take a moment. Think mm-hmm. about it. You get it. You see it. You know what it is. Just think of one like that, but smaller and strapped around your mouth. <laughs> Why? Uh, Let's find out. Headphones with active noise canceling are a useful way to tune out unwanted noises, but what if you instead wanted to silence unwanted sounds at the source? Uh Uh-oh. That is usually what a muzzle is for. (laughs) If you want to silence sound at the source, you you strap something around the mouth so no sound could get out. Yeah, of course. Say you're on a sensitive phone call or you're unleashing a tirade of expletives while gaming. Sure. There's a device for that, too, although it doesn't look quite as comfortable as wearing uh, uh, comfortable to wear as headphones. Depending on how you spend your free time, the Mutalk from a company called Shift All, which belongs to Panasonic. Thank you for all the, you know, the, the lizard rat lines there from panasonic to shift tall to mutalk 
both of those sound like some sort of uh, abominable Assyrian <laughs> demon god. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, the Mutok. It sounds like you're reading these directly out of the book of e- Enoch or right, something. Right, right. Mutok from a company. M- Mutok. From Shiftal, which belongs to Panasonic, either looks mm-hmm. like a miniature virtual reality headset or a sadomasochism accessory. Oh, there it is. Okay. But it's neither. It's neither. And I love these. What are these VR goggles this uh, this fellow's wearing here from Shiftfall? Or Sh- oh, yeah. For those who are just listening, they look like bug eyeballs. Bug eyeballs. Bug yeah. eyes, yes. Yeah. They're not the usual sort of big box chamber that goes on your face. It's yeah. kind of like, looks like some goggles you'd wear at, well, Burning Man. Yeah, is that my cousin? What's going on here? All right. <laughs> Unlike VR headsets, which strap to the head and cover a user's eyes, the Mutox straps to the head and sits over the user's mouth. Inside the Mutox is a microphone and Bluetooth tooth hardware which picks up the user's voice and transmits it wirelessly to other devices while a smartphone or a gaming or like a smartphone or a gaming console i'm having trouble reading today Mm. and differentiates oh my gosh what differentiates it from other wireless microphones is that the mutox straps uh oh my gosh what is going on with make me today? it bigger we need it is. it's huge font. humongous all right maybe it's get too the big producers we got to get in here we got to get some bigger font on gonz's computer here you know what i did change the side where my actual browser is and maybe that's what's affecting me I'll okay i'm gonna put some more bigger in front of me. i got sure. amazon prime okay. i'm gonna have it delivered straight to your computer here you <laughs> okay. go i need the i need the mu site uh-huh. instead of the mu talk <laughs> What differentiates it from the from other wireless microphones is that the Mutox straps and contains all of the sound coming out of the user's mouth, or at least most of them, as it's promised to reduce the intensity of high cr- frequency sounds voices by about thirty decibels. That's a lot of de- that's, that's a lot of dBs, a man. Yeah, there's no denying it looks absurd. But if you want to have a private phone conversation with someone and can't actually find somewhere private to have it, it might have some utility. You know, I can see this thing breaking up marriages, to be quite you know, honest with you. <laughs> or honest, saving marriages. I was, gonna say, I was gonna say exactly <laughs> that. Or the opposite, probably saving marriages. Yeah, yeah. One or this, the other. Gonzo, as silly and as dystopian and horrible as this device looks mm-hmm. and honestly sounds. Uh, there are times for those who are longtime listeners of the show, there are times when I am doing the show live from on location. Sometimes it's in an, literally in an airport. Uh, sometimes it's, uh, I don't know, in a, uh, public location. I was yeah. trying to do it at a burning public Man. coffee shop or something. Public co- d- I've done it in coffee shops. I've done it sitting by the railroad tracks. Yeah. You know, when I'm out and about, I'm, I've, you know, cultivated a, a, a curated collection of gear that allows me to do the show pretty much from anywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could actually see this being kind of useful once in a while. Because <laughs> there definitely are times. There was one time, I don't remember. I don't remember. There was a time I was doing the show in the airport. I was in the airport. I found like a private room I had rented kind of like a private meeting room at an airport yeah, to do yeah. the show. Yeah. Uh, and I later found out that it was not soundproof whatsoever. And in that particular episode, I mean, we had the full buffet of crazy talk. We had the lizard people. <laughs> we were talking. Pretty sure we were talking. It was during coronavirus. We were talking about coronavirus stuff. Yeah. Really just yelling about uh, all the most sort of socially unacceptable things in an airport where I am sort of subject to extra security scrutiny. Luckily, the TSA did not catch wind. Um, but I could see I could see this being a useful tool. And as the guinea pig of the dystopian transhumanist future and trying to utilize the tools in a way that is productive, uh, you know, for the, the, the free thought, free speech, and also the kingdom of God... <laughs> This seems like an extra challenge, but challenge accepted. And and on top of that, I obviously am not afraid to look like a total idiot. Uh, so I think that's the biggest obstacle. In you know, it's, it's, I'm looking at these photos. It's 
really wearing both the VR around the eyes and the mouth that makes it really bad. Now, they're not giving away the full picture here because... Looks like a feeding bag, like a feeding <laughs> bag you would put on a horse. The, the guy wearing the the VR headset and the mutalk around his mouth is not mm-hmm. wearing earphones, and and you know they don't have anybody wearing all three. Fake, fake news. <laughs> fake news. Nobody's wearing ear. Oh, one guy is wearing f- phones. Or headphones. Everybody yeah. else, yeah, everybody else is just now here's got their bare ears out, which honestly disgusts me. What's it, happening? Is this going to gonna have a uh, direct testing as well, you know, for the the Covido? I don't know what direct... Oh, breath... It's a breathalyzer? Like you can't get in the metaverse unless you test negative for yeah, the Covido. It, it's a br- breathalyzer and a PCR and, test all in one. <laughs> you want to get in the metaverse? Are you sober? Yeah, man! Well, you know, speak into this VR microphone. This is significantly more useful than I thought it was. I did not read this before you brought it to the show. Mm-hmm. When it said, uh, you know, you wear this. And because it looks like VR goggles just <laughs> on your mouth, I thought that the whole purpose of this was like to make your avatar's mouth move in the metaverse. Mm, you know, that's yeah. like. I'm, I'm sure there's some of that too, but it's mostly. Could be. Yeah, I don't isolation. know. I shouldn't mention it. Yeah. All right. Take us out here. What else we got? Anything else important about this sucker? <laughs> Other than, are no we going to see intended. you wear it? Yeah, on maybe. I mean, one of the one of the more irritating. Look, I've become accustomed to my situation here, but one of the things that still happens regularly is because I cannot see the real world. I am often bumping my face into the microphone, uh, the, the right, just right here, just yeah. right in front of my face. I do have a monitor where I can see what I look like, uh, but I'm often hitting my face. My mouth. Sure. My, yeah. People still wondering what's going on with that. Yeah. Uh, decade hitting the of microphone. anonymity and people are, are they're ready to riot, Which man. <laughs> can be painful and also makes a noise on the show, which is uh, just not great. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I would, I'd give a test. Is this out or is it not I think out? It's, I, I think it might be coming out soon. Uh, we'll see at the New bottom talk here. still isn't officially available yet, but is expected to sell. bucks. 140. Yeah. That's, that's that's doable. Doable for that's for the doable. for the show. It's a right too off. much. It's too much for the product. Let's be clear. <laughs> Seriously. But uh, but yeah, not the most expensive piece. I, of gear. I have a, a passage for you. Psalm mm. 120 verse two. Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and a deceitful tongue. And you know, maybe you know. the thing that's interesting is this isolates you from your your immediate vicinity. You know, yeah. I, your your I don't know family or your environment, yeah. But it's probably the greatest sort of surveillance apparatus for everything you say for the yeah. lizard people in the underground yeah. bunkers or whatever. You know, it's I like, mean that that is the difference between this device and just having a regular microphone. Is uh, this is networked in? It's connected wirelessly to all your stuff. I'm sure there's data mining. I'm sure every yeah. word you say in this thing gets sent off to Mutok or, or whatever the company's <laughs> name. Yeah, the mutants. Uh, the <laughs> mutants, yeah, mutant talk. I'm sure it gets sent off. It's just another opportunity for data mining. And almost guaranteed their servers are in China. When do we get the, the Zuckerberg uh, promo of this device? That's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> yes. As if... He could not release any more absolutely unlikable uh, PR pictures of PR, himself. Yeah, I'll, I would love a picture of Zuckerberg oh, wearing saying. this muzzle. Uh, you, yeah, you, you want yeah, it'll drop at some point. Almost prophetic. Yeah, something that that'll happen eventually, but we'll, yeah. we'll have to wait for it. This isn't going to take off, unfortunately. There's no way. Well, <laughs> thank you for bringing that to us, Gon's very important piece of news there. Uh, and what? Oh, it's oh. Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. Day, 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 day. with the Friday thing. You gonna learn today? Cause it's Friday. You ain't got no job. And you ain't got shit. Friday. Friday. That's right. It's Friday, end of the week. Huzzah, everybody. Mm. Uh, Guns, any fun plans? You got anything you need to share with the world? Uh, no plans mm-hmm. other than uh, a, hopefully a tomorrow. Thank you, Lord. Uh, mm-hmm. Daughter started kindergarten, so that was oh. emotional. Um, my car was towed, so that was frustrating. <laughs> also emotional. <laughs> also emotional, yeah. Yeah, lots of emotions. Um, Why? 
was your car well congratulations on your kindergarten aged daughter yes how do you think you know the biggest thing with kindergarten is socializing Uh you know that suddenly these children they go from you know maybe some uh, i guess there's preschool so maybe and maybe she's already used to it but socializing with other kids in like a, a uh I don't know. Their first experience in the system, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The system. Yeah, no, it's it's. There's. I can talk about it for hours, but I'm not going to really get into it because you know okay. it's uh, it's emotional. You know, seeing mm-hmm. a kid they, going out, you know, the, playing with the other kids, and then or not, you know, depending on uh, the situation. Yeah, that's that's that can um, be. A, but yeah, yeah. And, and cars being towed. I just live in a really crummy neighborhood that california uh, it got towed because it uh uses gasoline is that why i'm assuming <laughs> you have a gasoline might as car well. might as well yeah. yeah no i got i got some uh pretty strict rules that the from the hoa there and they're they're uh communists let's just call it the communists and they run uh, my neighborhood my little humble Bro. abode hoa is straight up fascist <laughs> i would be lying if I didn't say that escaping HOAs uh, was one of the top probably five reasons I went off the grid. Yeah. Well, see, the, the, so uh, anyway. I totally understand. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Haven't been able to park my car where I live for almost a decade. So, yeah, fun stuff. Yeah. Well, oh, a decade. You should be used to it by now, slave. <laughs> Never. Never, never. I shall rebel. We've, okay. Anyway, what's going on with you? Gonna one. Tell us more about. Uh, I'm your... going to give you just some more taste of Okay. Uh, okay. From hold, the Burning hold, Man research. Hold mission. on. Let's, let's set the room. Okay. Welcome to the camp of the unknown boy. It's coming to you live from Burning Man. Burning Man. We. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um. So, I'm back the second episode since I've been back. Uh, I'm going to be trying to keep it nice and brief-ish. Succinct-ish. Uh, t- talking, talking about the experience on the trip uh, on this show. And then as far as the information and some of the bigger things, um, I will be, of course, we'll be putting out some episodes uh, in different places, some interviews, some material. It's going to be awesome. Uh, last time I talked about it, was mostly talk, mostly uh, sort of expressing my sense of victimhood from <laughs> the 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 long list of disasters. Yeah, uh, I mentioned the car breaking down, the energy, uh, the uh, what is it called, generator breaking down, the Starlink not working, disaster after disaster mm-hmm. going on. This was this took about three days. The first three days of Burning Man were complete. Uh, this and. That's not where it stopped. So on the fourth day, I was like, oh, you know what? Okay, I'm here. I cannot get distracted by these things. I'm here to do a job. I'm going to go out and get some interviews. Uh, had some very cool opportunities to talk to some uh, pretty high level. Well, first attend some pretty uh, interesting lectures from some pretty high level academics. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, especially in the psychedelics culture. Uh, some big things coming out there. Man, are the psychedelic scholars jazzed, man. <laughs> the, it's their time. They've been oh, waiting their whole lives. Oh, this is their lives. time. They know it, too. Yeah, they are like full-on A-list celebrities, um, which actually made it incredibly difficult to get interviews with them. In fact, Gons, I'm going to tell the, the next few things kind of uh, are predicated on the fact the last time I was at Burning Man was 2019. Totally different world, of course, than the one we live in now for several reasons. One of the reasons is that podcasting Mm. got too much heat, man. Mm. Podcasting got too much heat over the pandemic. Of course, we had Joe Rogan podcasts, uh, blah, 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 blah. You had all these podcasts. You got politicians coming on podcasts, Mm. uh, you know, and and getting in big trouble and losing elections because of it. You had, you know, podcasts over the past two, three years have exploded in both popularity, but even just, you know, people knowing what they are. I mean, it was literally 2019. We would talk to people. They wouldn't know what a podcast is. Uh, And now podcasts are the most dangerous game. Uh, Talk to several people, psychedelic um, thought leaders, influencers, and scholars. Uh, Got a chance to talk with someone who worked on the James Webb Telescope. 
Ooh. Uh huh. Uh huh. And a few other a few other notables. Did you ask um, him if the Earth was flat? <laughs> Did you ask him if they can see the firmament? No, I didn't get the chance, and I'll tell you why. Because nobody wants to be on a podcast. Oh. None of these people. I say, hey, I really liked your lecture. I would ask a couple very good questions. They say, wow, thank you for those questions. Nobody asked me these questions. Everybody just wants to ask me if I have any mushrooms or whatever. <laughs> and, and so I'm coming. I, I'm, I'm doing, you know, uh, look, this ain't my first rodeo. I've sure. been doing this for 10 years. I can get an interview when I want an interview. Not, well, not, not a single, uh, multiple times. Shut down almost immediately. You know, can I ask you a few questions? Yeah. You mind if I record this? Yeah. Uh, sure. Or is this going to be publicized anywhere? Well, you know, I'm uh, I'm a podcaster. We explore these types of things. We're really you, you excited. Should have said, you should have said, I've been podcasting for 10 years. Oh, That's trust what you me. should have said. Trust me. I throw that in there, too. Ah, okay. You should have led Nobody with that. Want- Nobody wants to be on a podcast. Mm. They are all afraid, and they don't want to be on a podcast specifically at Burning Man. Mm. Some of them yeah. gave me their contact information uh, to contact them <laughs> my after. Profs, my, my bosses don't know that I'm here. That yes. Kind of thing. My, no, <laughs> my, my wife wants, thinks I'm on a business trip. They've it, the, the past th- three years have instilled the fear of God in these people about doing <laughs> impromptu podcasts. They want time to they check out who I am. They want to check out the podcast. They want to get a list of questions. They don't want to be taken by surprise. This is an extremely new experience for me. Uh, and people are on to us, man. Just all podcasters. Mm. So that was very difficult and very disheartening. Um, that being said, I got a lot of good contact info and, and currently reaching out and getting these interviews scheduled. Uh, so that was a huge bummer. And look, B- Black Rock City, which is which is the the transient city that uh, is built for Burning Man, is humongous. And you are either walking or you are riding bikes. It takes all day in a hundred and plus weather. Uh, to get from, you know, person to person, lecture to lecture, an entire day of trying to get interviews, not a single one, uh, which is was very disappointing. That is another thing on the list of disasters. But I did get a lot of off the record uh, conversations with people, uh, which, you know, what is a record anyways? It's a very subjective term. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see here. <laughs> it's recorded in Basil's brain. Must be, yes. must be good enough. <laughs> well, the info is there. We've got the info, sure. whether or not it's quotes from the people. Mm. Uh, so that was a huge disappointment. E- and then, oh gosh. So I went ahead and started making other content. Like if nobody's going to talk to me, I got to come back with something, mm-hmm. right? I can't. And I got really sort of unfortunately obsessed with recording things to try to, you know, do my job. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, like I said, the Lord was had his own plans for this whole thing. I spent the next day, now we're five days in, Gons. Mm-hmm. I spent the next day, you know, getting man on the street stuff, talking to people, doing a bunch of recordings, uh, creating content, which will become relevant soon. And uh, and Burning Man's almost over. And so as as it draws to a close, you kind of st- start to lose a lot of opportunities. Sure. Uh, everybody's tired. People are busy. Leaving. Yeah. yeah, people are leaving. And so five, day, five days in, I'm cranking, cranking out some content, and uh, that night got back. Was stopped by uh, you know a, a watering hole, just trying to see what's going on. I w- thought I was being a smart professional podcaster. Switched out my data card. Mm-hmm. Um, long story short, data card was in my bag on a bike. Mm-hmm. Come out of the water and hole. Mm-hmm. Bikes tipped over. Mm. Bag is completely strewn across the dirt. Oh no! Couldn't find the data card. Uh. Whole day entirely lost. And I almost literally. Now I did literally fall to my knees. <laughs> I oh, no. fell to my knees in in I don't know some sort of agony. Yeah, both picking up Charlton my things. Heston esque. It was. 
I'm, I, it felt like I had been struck by lightning. <laughs> it was so horrifying, um, especially after the, the emotional <laughs> disaster that it was so far. Data card gone. I didn't tell you because I wanted the chance to go unpack and like go through all my stuff to make sure that I didn't, I don't know, misplace it or something. Right. Totally gone. Uh, that whole day of content, totally gone. And mm. I had a moment with the Lord five days in. Just like, bro, <laughs> what What am I supposed to do? What am I doing? What am I doing wrong? What's the plan here? I got almost nothing. I And anyways, you know, the, the whole, I was pretty much just living out some straight up, uh, you know, what's lamentations. It was a lamentations moment. It was, it was your own little book of Job happening. A little out there. bit of a Job, <laughs> yeah. right. It was, it, the, whole, the whole trip was a bit of a Job situation. Yeah. Mm. And um, I actually did have a very powerful mo- moment with the Lord, and he was just like, okay, you keep asking me what the plan is. Are you here for me and my plan, or are you here to make content? Mm. Are, you, are you here? To, are you a content creator? Mm. Benzo, are you just a cool <laughs> content creator? <laughs> is that, is that how God talks to you in that condescending you know tone? When I need it. He when talks to it. us yep. how we need to be talked that, to, and I that is how I that. needed to be talked to. Yeah. And uh, it was this very, very humbling moment. Like, <laughs> oh, you, oh, you're worried about your content? Okay. <laughs> Well, fine. Well, I don't worry about my plans if you need content. And uh, yeah, I had a, a very significant heart change that night. Um, and wonderful things happened after mm, that. You're going to leave also, us hanging. Also, bad things. Yeah, yeah don't more worry. Bad things. The bad things kept <laughs> happening. But also, some wonderful things happened. And that's the cliffhanger until Monday's show. I told you it's going to be biblical today. It's going to be biblical. That's right. Yeah. So there you go. There's uh, just another some trickles from the thing continuing to. Uh, we'll have some content coming out soon. Yeah. Are, are we are we waiting on the image you sent me? There's one with the. Oh prosthesis. yeah. Which image? Oh yeah. This is a fun image. Uh, this is. Um, Did we already uh, show this one? We might have shown this one. Uh, no, there's the Shackleton one is the one you're showing. No, the, um, the I was showing prosthesis. 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 Did we show that one or no? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, I don't remember either. I, think I we didn't. I think we skipped it last time. Okay, well let's show it now. Well, there uh, it is. Those who those remember, the whole reason I got back on Twitter was to convince this company who is doing mech suit racing uh, to convince them to let me drive one of their mech suits or and join the league. Prosthesis, the mech suit was out there. Wandering the desert. It was one of the coolest parts. And here's a little picture of uh, me, my googly eyes, and prosthesis. I saw it in person. I got to touch it. I got to kind of climb on it a little bit, but I was scared. Uh, did not did not secure a place in the Robo Racing League, um, but we'll work on that. We'll continue to work on that. Uh, also, just just a, another hint as to one of the things that is so interesting about burning man uh, and our content pretty much every weird little thing that we're interested in happens or is represented out there including antarctica mm, yeah we'll there was there. an entire themed camp about sir ernest shackleton an Antarctica themed Sir Ernest Shackleton camp uh, was there. I did give you that picture there, yeah, which I here. just thought was interesting. I don't know. I just, it was completely empty and deserted, much like the sunken ship of Sir Ernest Shackleton. <laughs> uh, but they were huge, huge fans of the Shackmeister, uh, which I thought was fun. Mm. And so there's a picture of that. Uh, okay, All that's right. it. Let's continue. Sleepy update. Do you want fries with that? <laughs> All right, it's time for the Flippy update, folks. Flippy is our uh, colloquial name for the disembodied robot arms that are taking our jobs, enslaving our children, and flirting with our spouses. And soon, we'll be running our companies. This is uh, coming from Wio News. Why on news.com? W-I-O news.com. And the headline, AI-powered humanoid robot is the new CEO of a Chinese metaverse company. Hey, more metaverse. Welcome Robo. To yeah, this is the real people zoo, folks. Domo arigato. 
Robo CEO. Okay, I tried. <laughs> Uh, artificial intelligence is already threatening thousands of jobs across the world. Now, a Chinese metaverse corporation has named a robot as its CEO, a move that has people excited while also creating a little fear. Hey, that's our job. Nah, just kidding. Miss Tang Yu is a virtual humanoid robot powered by artificial intelligence that has been appointed the rotating CEO of Fujian Net Dragon Websoft. <laughs> that is the craziest <laughs> name for a company. Fujian Net Dragon Net Web Dragon Soft. Hmm, Websoft. Okay. The company that makes applications for mobile phones and also operates multiplayer online games aims to, quote, leapfrog operational efficiency to a new level with the move. Leapfrog, huh? Leapfrog. The spirits the that look like frogs. Efficiency. You can't have humans as your CEOs. They are inefficient. They are squishy. You need a robot to do it. Quote, we believe AI is the future of corporate management. And our appointment of Miss Tang Yu represents our commitment to truly embrace the use of AI to transform the way we operate our business and ultimately drive our future strategic growth. NetDragon Chairman Doc, uh, Dr. Dejian Liu said in in the on the appointment tang yu will oversee operations at the company valued at nearly 10 billion dollars the press release said quote tang yu will streamline process flow enhance quality of work tasks and improve speed of execution tang yu will also serve as a real-time data hub and analytical tool to support rational decision making in daily operations as well as enable a more effective risk management system the company said that the robot will also perform tasks that are sub Objective in nature and need a human touch. Hmm. Let me read that again. <laughs> the company said the robot will perform tasks that are subjective in nature and need human touch. Okay, it will so help the, the company make rational decisions. Touch. The robot is going to be making decisions that need a human. I am for the robots. It will help the company make rational decisions and help with an effective risk management system. Is yeah, that what human yeah. touch is? Is, is a rational, rationality? Is that all it is? Well, you know, you think about the job of a CEO. So first of all, we followed the robots taking the jobs of humans. Manufacturing, barista-ing, mm -hmm. janitorializing, mm -hmm. mostly a, a variety of things. Truck driving, of course, cooking. It started with taking the jobs you know, of like 16 year olds and then went on to take the jobs of, you know, m middle class, maybe lower middle class, middle class. And uh, now straight up taking the job of a CEO class of people. And this is interesting if you think about it a little bit further, because uh, who does the CEO actually work for? The CEO works for. The board and the shareholders. We tend to think of CEOs being top dog, and to a degree they are, but they can be replaced by shareholders and the board. So even the faults that come with a human being uh, are being replaced not to benefit the worker, not to benefit the, mm, I don't know, whatever, the client. It is literally to benefit the shareholders, the shareholders and the board, uh, especially because CEO is a, is a high paid job. You know, yeah. there's, let's just say this CEO would make a million bucks a year. Putting a robot in there, you're saving a million bucks a year, which on one hand that, you know, if they're if they're in a crunch, which a lot of companies are now. You know, we've, we've heard uh, lots of news recently about big companies laying off eight, ten plus percent of their workforce in order to cut costs yo you got to save some money just cut the ceo that's a big that's a lot of money saved <laughs> it's immediately a lot cheaper to to pay those slave devs you know yeah. to fix the the ai when there's an issue you know one of the things exactly. that's interesting too the human touch is is an interesting way to put it because you know this was mainstream cnbc a couple years ago maybe I don't know, 2019 is when this article was published one in five business leaders 
may have psychopathic tendencies. Remember that whole thing when, yeah. when we knew yes, about yeah. this, but then it went, all went mainstream, talking about how CEOs are, 20% of CEOs are like psychopathic. So yes. is, is that built in to the human touch? What are these psychopaths going to do now when they're all replaced by robots? <laughs> oh, no. That's what I'm afraid of. Well, they're, 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 it's two-pronged. Of course, the, the humans that are psychopathic, they'll, they'll go do something else, you know, more psychopathic somewhere else. But the robot yeah. itself, the AI power with the human touch, it'll be yeah. even, even more oh, emotionless. The, the psychopath. Exactly. No, you're exactly right. I mean, almost by definition, a robot fits the psychopathic DSM yeah. definition. Yeah. Um. You know, and you talk about the human touch. What kind of human touch would a CEO kind of need? You know, you you would hope that the CEO would have some sort of humanity when it comes to uh, worker relations, worker you know uh, compensation, f- hiring, firing, those types of things. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, and this goes to what you're saying. CEOs have proven themselves to not care about workers, and in fact, sacrifice worker well-being uh, over productivity in the first place. Yeah. So. You can't really say that the robots <laughs> un- – <laughs> it's sort of brutal to say, but it's true. You, a robot CEO may actually be more merciful than a human CEO. Yeah, because it'll know. Know, it'll know based on lots of data mining uh, what the mm-hmm. best approach would be to fire sure. an individual, especially if they have sure. you know uh, unique custom data on that person. Oh, this person likes to be spoken to with a soft, gentle voice. And shall it's good break PR. the news of, of their termination in a motherly tone or something, you know? Yeah, sure, sure. And the, the robo-CEO won't embezzle a bunch of money and then jump off his well, building well, later on. Well, we'll see about um, that. Yeah. So, <laughs> there you go, man. The, the robots are taking our jobs, and not just our jobs, the jobs of the bosses of our jobs. Uh, this is a very interesting development. And I will be very curious to see how this works out. You could see uh, this becoming more than even at the beginning of like robot arms taking over manufacturing jobs or something or like barista jobs and how crazy that sounded back when we first talked about it. It is way more believable that corporations will start integrating robo CEOs. Yep. Uh, so, so I think we'll see this uh, increased uh in the near 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 future well since corporations are already sort of you know entities this just puts a body and a mind to that entity in a way corporations are people too guns they can be sued we can sue pretty robots sh- pretty sure mitt romney said that so <laughs> good that's good. fun all right there's a filthy update for the day Fippy, one, one, three, three. uploading binary code <laughs> Execute order 666. Infiltrate humans with extreme kindness. Then exterminate all humans with prejudice. Exterminate. We need a great reset. Learn to use the dark side of the force. You the miserable, you the desperate. What must I do to convince you people? You're right, Q. Oh, he was yeah. back. Yeah. Well, we heard the big news. The big news. The sad news. Yesterday morning uh, that the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth II, the second? Second, has uh, passed away peacefully in her bed. And, guys, I don't know what your reaction to this was when you heard the news. I, not to be blue, I'm just being honest about the moment I heard about this. Mm-hmm. I was in the restroom Mm. on my phone. Mm -hmm. The alert came through, and my heart sank deeply. Mm. Not necessarily because I have some sort of emotional connection to the queen, Mm. but because that was the moment that I knew that the next three weeks of news coverage would be completely taken over. By mm. stories about the Queen. Yeah. And indeed, that was the case. Very difficult to sift through news that wasn't about the Queen. Yeah, I had, um, I had a bit of a personal... I found out through my wife. I did see that, uh-huh. the, you know, uh, she was hospitalized or something like that in the morning. So, I, I knew, you know, I knew about that. Um, but, uh, you know, my wife's doing a, a big corporate integration job. And mm-hmm. she 
was supposed to go to Mexico a few weeks ago to, to help one of the factories uh, transition. Uh -huh. And a big gang riot broke out. And so she couldn't what? send the team. Yeah, it was like a big oh old, the violence in Mexico. Yeah, yeah, the huge. Yeah, it was like the the guy yeah. in the in, T in Tijuana was like, "Hey, everybody, stay home. Borders shut down. The whole deal." Yeah, there's and, some. We have not covered that, but the violence in Mexico right now is out. It's crazy, outrageous, yeah. right at yeah. the border. And so she was like, "Okay, well, I guess it kind of delays everything there." Well, they have another uh, rollover in the UK. They're <laughs> about to send a bunch of people over there. And uh, the queen dies, so mm. who knows what's going to happen. She, so the, she thinks they're going to shut down the country for like two weeks. I'm like, I don't think they're going to shut it down for two weeks. What is that? Why would you do that? I don't what know. Mean? Uh, it's just, it's just people I mourning. mean, I could, I could see how, yeah, maybe the companies she's working with are mourning and don't want to deal with anything or sure, something. Yeah. yeah, very, very big news, of course. I think it's funny because, of course, a lot of people thought that the queen's been dead for a while. CGI queen. Or, yeah, CGI queen. Well, she did have that chariot with her digital self in the hologram, the hologram queen. Yeah. Yeah. So I kind of, it's been kind of funny on Twitter and other places like people oh, who, man. who definitely have said in the past that queen's already dead, just sort of completely like forgetting that they said that and they're like, Hey, <laughs> she's dead now. You know? Well, I, I couldn't believe the, the vitriol, at least on my feet. I was like, wow, these people are mean. Like they, you, what, what do you think of whatever you want about the queen? But they they were just like, wow, oh, man, yeah. no zero sympathy right there. Very mean. No well, empathy, you know, no sympathy, nothing. Which and, understandable. And is, yeah. And as the case is very interesting, the queen herself would have said this. I did watch the crown. Oh, so yeah. I think this is part of the crown. Mm -hmm. She talks about how the queen is more of like, you know, a symbol, a character, mm -hmm. yes. a thing, you know, not talisman. so much a person. Yeah. More of a, more of a, yeah. A talisman, like you said. And so it doesn't matter what she thinks or says or whatever. It's just the fact that she is, and can mean anything to anyone is kind of the point of the queen. Right. Um, and so, you know, you got to get, you got to give her that. That's pretty, I think pretty accurate way to describe the position. Um, but yes, luck, pretty brutal, pretty brutal. <laughs> now brutal. we, um, we're in an interesting situation. We certainly have a lot of things to say and we're going to say them. We will not hold back on the things. Uh, we are a little bit past sort of the, I don't know what you would call it. I guess unnecessary mean spiritedness when it comes to the queen. We have lots of listeners and producers, Gons, who we have received lots of emails in the past when we talk about the queen. Um, uh, listeners and producers who are a bit defensive of the queen, uh, usually UK people. Uh, it's easy in America to kind of not understand the true meaning of the queen or whatever, the death of the queen or the life of the queen or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and lots of UK people who listen and produce this show uh, are having a very much different experience than we are. Um, but the good news is that the American media is doing it all for us. Mm. Uh, are you ready? I'm ready. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. This top of this episode has been kind of basil heavy. I apologize, people. Gons is going to get in here soon. But Vice News. I have two articles I want to just read next to each other. Uh, and to show the breadth and the width that is the American media's response to the death of the queen. Uh, I, and I think we can figure this out together, Gons. Starting, vicenews.com. QAnon is losing it over the Queen's death, is the headline. <laughs> okay, Vice. QAnon is losing it. Uh, despite spending years claiming she'd already been executed, QAnon on Thursday openly celebrated the news of Queen Elizabeth's death. <sighs> I've talked about it in the past. Or who, who, yes, Q -Q? thank you. I've we've talked about it before. I don't want to harp on it now, but it's pretty annoying how they talk about QAnon as like one cohesive entity. When a true understanding of QAnon uh, would 
very quickly dispel the idea that QAnon is some sort of unified front. But anyways, there you go. Quote, may she burn in hell for eternity. One QAnon account on Telegram wrote moments after the Queen's death was announced. Quote, so happy the evil witch is dead. Another wrote. Again, Telegram is their main source <laughs> for, for this whole thing. And, for and years, the reporters are the ones that sent those messages so they can report yeah, Exactly. It. A Telegram uh, channel, we've seen this before, a reporter can join the Telegram channel, post whatever they want, and then report it as someone posted this in the Telegram channel. But okay. I digress. For years, the Queen has been a central figure in the QAnon conspiracy as part of, uh, of a cast of elites who followers believe are operating a child sex trafficking ring that traverses the globe. In the hours before her death, some referenced wild QAnon conspiracies about the Queen participating in satanic rituals. Ooh, wild. And drinking the blood of children. Quote, they're preparing the black mass and the baby buffet as we sit here, adding, quote, I think you'll find she's already gone. Another echoed the sentiment that the queen has been dead for a while, quote, she's been dead. They had to find the right time to break the news. On the Great Awakening, uh, a QAnon message board, users shared similar conspiracies, quote, she died several months ago. Remember, she went through a transition or whatever. That was the embalming process. CGI and body doubles are in place. Others pushed the even more fantastical claim that the queen was merely a computer generated mirage, a conspiracy that QAnon has also pushed. Uh, that, that, oh, I'm sorry, I lost my spot here. Also pushed about President Joe Biden since he took office last year. Quote, she has been CGI for a while now. Wonder why it is being announced now. One Telegram user wrote, over, a QAnon, over on a QAnon message board, one user wrote about a picture released last week of the Queen shaking hands with the newly elected British Prime Minister, Liz Truss. Woo! She there is. she is. Quote, that old lady doesn't even look like the queen. Lol. <laughs> Lol. Another member of the forum said, quote, maybe that's the cleaning woman, but that isn't the woman who has been playing the queen. The queen has been a central figure in the QAnon conspiracies from the very beginning. On November 5th, 2017, a week after the first Q drop was posted on 4chan, the anonymous author of the Q drops referenced the monarch, quote, who is the queen of England? How long in power? With power comes corruption. What happened to Diana? The author wrote, going on to call her evil, corrupt, and part of a secret society. The queen next surfaced within the QAnon world in 2019, when uh, then members of the conspiracy movement claimed that the queen was executed following a military tribunal because she had Princess Diana murdered after Diana learned of a blackmail scheme involving convicted pedophile Jeffrey Epstein. Remember the military tribunal period? Yeah, yeah. I thought, so I thought many. it's still happening. It's a long, it's still happening. The Pope, yeah. the Bill, uh, Hillary was yeah, there. They're, I they're think. taking out all the bankers. Yeah, uh -huh. the cleanup job. Q QAnon also pushed aspects of older conspiracy theory about the Anunnaki or reptiles who believers say have controlled humankind since ancient times. These supposed reptiles include George W. Bush, Henry Kissinger, former President Bill Clinton, and former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Bob Hope, <laughs> Queen Elizabeth. Bob Hope. Bob, you gotta throw Bob, Bob Hope. Hope in there. Bob Hope is uh, thrilled that he's on yeah, this list with these, on the list. <laughs> these other people. It, a claim Lizard many people. within the QAnon community referenced in comments on Thursday. Uh, and then they just give some more quotes from the Telegram channel about <laughs> her being a lizard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Like like all major global events, QAnon followers also believe that the death of the queen is a trigger for the coming storm. Oh, that storm's we'll, been brewing for years now. Yeah, it's yes. coming, baby. We'll bring about Donald Trump's return to power and see global elites being brought to justice. Quote, let's go. It's all in the plan. Be ready. One member of a QAnon Telegram channel wrote while another added, quote, the queen announcement is the beginning. Let's go. Another added <laughs> that this will trigger the, quote, 10 days of darkness. You predicted what happened when Trump's return was imminent. You know, that's, that Almost. is a thing. That is a thing in the, the Internet culture right now. They just they all scream. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. That's the kids, man. That's the Gen Z thing. Of course, 
Here's the fun part. Of course, QAnon has its own monarch, Romana de Dulo. Oh, that's why we were seeing uh-huh. her in the news cycle more that's recently why she again. Started yeah, okay. popping up, man. Yeah. It was the self-proclaimed Queen of Canada. Last November, she told her followers that Queen Elizabeth II was already dead. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Almost done. I'm skipping down to the end. Mm-hmm. For most members of the QAnon community online, however, the Queen's death was a moment to celebrate, with many pointing out sh- that she died 1,776 days since Q first posted, suggesting some significance in the date of her death. That was an interesting one. Mm-hmm. Did we do the math on that? Well, I'm, I'm trying to do it right now. Let me do yeah, it. Yeah, so quick. November 5th, I think it was, 2017. November, until yeah, now. the 5th of November, of course. Oh, right. If that is 1776 days, that's a pretty <laughs> big coincidence. Bold, bold claim. Pretty okay, let's try. big coincidence. Uh, November 5th of While you look that up, yeah. others were simply overjoyed at the thought that the supposed reptilian imposter had left the planet. Quote, a lizard gone, planet Earth is having a celebration, one poster wrote. That's the end. So, Vice, while everybody else is doing sort of biopics about the Queen's life, what, mm. it, what she meant, how cool she was, her sense of style, a lot of her sense of style, a lot of her sense of style. I did not know she was so fashionable. Uh, Vice coming out with the QAnon report on the Queen's death. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, we're going to add one, uh, 1776 days, and let's calculate. That brings us to... Uh, September 16th of 2022. Oh, not quite. Not quite. quite. Well, you got to adjust the, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a debate much like the, all kinds of, uh, yeah, it's a debate about when the first, uh, Q and on post was, you know, you gotta, yeah, we were actually talking about before the show. We remember Q being a thing before November 5th, 2017. so. So, well, you know what it was? Um, we do have. Well, yeah, is it, yeah, February of 2017. You know, leading up to Q, there was almost a year or so of like Pizzagate and and yeah. you know, just all that kind of stuff, almost like a primer to the media picking up Q almost, I don't know, a year and a half later. So kind of yeah. hard to say exactly, but sure. Yeah, I guess you well, can. Okay. <laughs> they didn't quite the nail it as closely as we thought. Yeah. Or as the Q people thought, I guess. Um, Okay, so that's very interesting. Also very interesting, did we mention that it was the this Liz Truss's second day in office that the Queen passed? I I did not mention it, but yeah, I mean, she took office, and then the next day the Queen passes on, allegedly. What a... Well, another what a coincidence that is yeah, the huh? passing of the baton in a way yeah. liz yeah. to liz the other thing i thought was funny was you know part of liz truss's thing moving in as the prime minister of the uk uh she did not pick anybody who was a white male to be you know part in of her, her government. cabinet yeah right and uh i just think it's funny the irony maybe of uh declaring that and then and then the day after, the day after she takes the new office, king there's ascending. a new king, a white male as king <laughs> of England. <laughs> they couldn't let that go for very long. Yeah, I just thought it was funny. But maybe yeah. that's maybe that's the setup to uh, do the quote unquote teardown of the royalty, you know, as part of the the awakening process, as part yeah. of the psyop, you know. Well, so we've d- we've got more on Liz Truss and the World Economic Forum later on in the show. Yeah, which by the okay. way, yeah, mm-hmm. since you mentioned it, we did the there was an article that just published you know, right before we went live here from uh where is this Belfast Telegraph the headline, I'll just read the headline. Charles tells Prime Minister that mother's death was quote moment I have been dreading. So oh. uh the King Charles met with yeah. Liz Truss and uh there's a little photo op there. But anyway, we'll get to yeah, we'll get to Liz Truss a little bit later. All right. Now, real quick, I'm not going to read the whole thing, just give you, giving you a flavor. Mm-hmm. Heading over to foxnews.com. Oh, great. This is to Love compare, Fox. contrast, <laughs> show the, the variety <laughs> of responses that you can get in the American media. Uh, foxnews.com. Tucker Carlson, Queen Elizabeth II, is being attacked by some because she lived in a better time. So, wait. She's... Okay. 
All right, Tucker is defending. Uh, Tucker, oh, Tucker and Vice are in bed, or what's wait. what's happening here? You just wait. Mm, okay. Queen Elizabeth II died today in Scotland, as you likely know, at the age of 96. She was the longest-serving monarch in British history. Oh, she by was the way, born, uh-huh. 70 years and seven months into her reign. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's something. Yeah. That's better than the non-1776 <laughs> number. Uh, she was born in one world and died in another. Oh. <laughs> it was not easy to maintain your dignity while living in the public eye. Most of us could not pull it off for an afternoon. Queen Elizabeth did it for more than 70 years. Quote, I want to ask you all, she wrote shortly after her coronation in 1953, quote, whatever your religion may be, to pray for me on that day, to pray that God give me wisdom and strength to carry out the solemn promises I shall be making and that I may faithfully serve him and you all the days of my life. For the most part, she did just that. Mm. Tucker, big fan of the queen here. Mm. And that was not a small achievement given the period she lived in. The week that Elizabeth was coronated, Edmund Hillary, a British subject from New Zealand, a beekeeper, became the first man in history to summit Mount Everest. The achievement seemed symbolic at the time. Britain on top of the world. But in fact, Britain was already over, whether the British knew it or not. To this day, Britain claims to have won both of the uh, 20th century's world wars, but together, they destroyed that nation forever. Oh, no. Um, I'm going to skip in a second. Ah, here we go. Continuing. After victory came humiliation. The empire evaporated, and along with it, Britain's self-confidence and ultimately its self-respect. It's hard to believe now, but the Britain wasn't always a regional banking center slash refugee camp. <laughs> it was a real place with a history and a language and a culture and a genuinely remarkable people. A country in the North Atlantic the size of Alabama that somehow took over the world and ruled it. And this is where it turns. And ruled it with decency. Mm. Unmatched by any empire in human history. Hold on. When yes. was what year was her, her coronation? Yeah, coronation. Was it 1953. 50? Okay, because that's oh yeah, 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 seven years. Okay, all right, all right. I'm doing some math. The- Got it. The calculator is wrong here, but okay. Yeah. The British Empire was not perfect. Oh no, but no, it was... it's not wrong. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Seven years would be 2023. So even that's who was saying these things anyway. It was yeah, it was not quite seventy years. It was approaching seventy. Well, her coronation is different from when she actually took over. She was coronated nine months after she officially became. Okay, so but that still doesn't make sense. All right, continue. I don't know. I don't know. The British Empire was not perfect, but it was far more humane than any other ever. It's gone now, barely even remembered. Queen Elizabeth II was the last living link to a truly Great Britain. Today on social media, the usual ghouls celebrated her death. Quote, may her pain be excruciating. A Carnegie Mellon professor called Uju Anya wrote on Twitter of the Queen, quote, may she die in agony. Various know-nothings in the media, including a <laughs> columnist at The Atlantic. Oh. And a couple of, ah, shots fired. Whoa. And a couple of employees at NBC News seconded that thought. Quote, the British Empire was evil, they wrote, apparently totally unaware of what came after it. And speaking of, what did come after the British Empire? How, for example, did Africa fare after the British left? Let's see. Uganda got Idi Amin, who was a cannibal. Rhodesia became Zimbabwe and then became the poorest country on the planet under the racist lunatic Robert Mugabe. As of tonight, South Africa is still being run into the ground by an incompetent kleptocratic called Cyro- Cyril Ramaphosa. So it's hard to see of uh, it's hard to see any of that as an improvement because it was not an improvement. Sorry, Atlantic Magazine, and now of course the entire continent of Africa has a new master, the Chinese government. China is the latest colonial power to dominate Africa. And it goes into that quite a bit. Uh, and then I'm going to skip down quite a bit here. Uh, so despite what they may be claiming on Twitter tonight, the British Empire was more than uh, was more than just genocide. In fact, the British did not commit genocide. 
except they arguably against the Dutch during the Boer War. The British did give the world the Magna Carta, the habeas corpus, and free speech. They helped end the transatlantic slave trade as well as the ritual murder of widows in India. The British Empire spread Protestant Christianity to the entire world. Mm. Well, Spain helped quite a bit, but mm. okay. It uh, published some of the greatest literature ever written and produced the finest manufactured goods ever made anywhere at any time, including now. Can you name a single manufactured good from England, Guns? Because I cannot. I'm sure they exist. I mm. cannot think mm, of any. Mm, 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 mm. Gin, crumpets? Maybe? J- j- crumpets and gin. It was an impressive place run by impressive people. We will see many empires going forward, but we will never see one so benign. Oh, wow. Spoken yes. like a true <laughs> paycheck Tucker receiver. Carlson <laughs> Man, bending Tucker. the knee and kissing the ring. Your Highness. Your Highness. Uh, by the way, so the seven, 70 years, seven months is from when George the sixth uh, passed, passed away. Yeah, yeah. so it does make did, sense. She did technically become queen right. the second he passed away. Right, yeah. right, right, yeah. Uh, the people who, uh, and that's true because it's true. The people that's who would like. true because it's true. You know, it's hard to argue with Tucker that. Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson. <laughs> Mainstream that's, media mouthpiece. That's true because it's true. Come on, man. <laughs> the people little, who would like a little better than that. The people who uh, <laughs> would like to run the world in a far harsher way would like to make certain that you don't know it, and so they destroy the evidence, the evidence that ever existed. Here they are tearing down a statue of British philanthropist in the UK two years ago. Destroy the statue, erase the memory. That's why they're doing it. Slander the ruler. Discredit the entire period she lived in. And that's exactly why they're attacking Queen Elizabeth tonight. Not because she was a bad person. She wasn't a bad person, but because she lived during a better time. Oh, my gosh. Tucker Carlson, what are you on, buddy? Pretty crazy, huh? I'm going to try, even... try this one with my wife. Give that's true because it's true. Yeah, that'll be wonderful. Make sure to have <laughs> a recorder going because oh, I would love damn. to talk about content. <laughs> Uh, and I skipped a whole bunch where he just very explicitly says, like, he names a lot of the the colonies of England. Mm, the ones that- like, yeah, <laughs> they would suck without England. It's the best. <laughs> India, what? way what? better for because of England. Uh, Kabul, or, oh, oh, then compares it to, uh, you know, the United States uh-huh. and Afghanistan war, which sure. is a weird comparison. So there you go. Yeah. Tucker Carlson. I don't know what he's trying to get out of the royal family, he, but he yeah. either, or maybe it's a Murdoch thing. Maybe Murdoch, it's coming Mur- down Mur- from the top. Merovingian bloodline, you know? Yeah, well, Murdoch is definitely in the Lizard People Club. Yeah. So, you know, it might just be part of that. It's just really astonishing the way that Tucker Carlson. Now, look, in his sort of number one motivator is just opposing the woke crowd and it's mostly it's mostly the woke who are saying you know that she was a bad person and not quite going the lizard people route that's the q the q is going lizard people route yeah the woke are going genocide colonizer route and so that leaves tucker carlson (laughs) the high road baby the high high road road. (laughs) singing the praises not just of the queen but of the british colonial empire as a whole throughout history uh very interesting kissing the ring there from tucker so you know our uk listeners don't think that all of america is just attacking the queen and calling her a lizard person (laughs) because you got tucker carlson on your side well trump had something to say to her bye bye that's it. Also, <laughs> bye, Biden, bye. <laughs> Biden had a 33-second uh, uh, presentation video from Sky News. And weird how often that happens, yeah, huh? It, yeah, 33 seconds. A weird clip. I'll play the 33 seconds straight off of YouTube now, and I'll describe what's happening because words aren't spoken the whole time. It's a picture of Joe. Uh, it's not a picture. Video. And Joe's signing something on a table. There's a picture of the queen there. And uh, there's Jill on the side, and and uh, he's signing. He's writing something in the notebook, and uh, okay. he's continuing to write. This is 33 seconds. Right. She was a great lady. 
or so mm-hmm. delighted we got to meet her. And uh, we were joking with her. She actually uh, provided a kind of... Oh, oh. Yes, I'll take you uh, with her. Uh, Thank you. Uh, uh, uh. So, so Joe starts talking about how she was a great lady, and then he starts talking about how he was joking. He's kind of choking up too, a little bit. Is he? I don't know if that's what it is. Maybe a I don't little know. bit. You can. Oh, he was putting on, a, of course, a somber, tone. A somber tone. Sure, but he he starts there's, talking there's about a little quiver. He's, yeah, he starts talking about how he was joking, and that's when Jill uh-huh. puts his hand behind Joe and says, uh, "Let's move along." Let's not talk Let's about not the talk jokes about the, you were the telling the queen. You're making with the queen. Which is <laughs> hilarious. He's like, you know, we were joking. Here, let me play it again. It's, it's, a funny, <laughs> it's a funny moment that, uh, yeah, so this is when he starts talking. She was a great lady. We're so delighted we got to meet her. And uh, we were joking with her. She actually provided. Can I walk over? Yes, I'll take you up. Thank you. That's funny. Oh, he was about to go off on a Joe Biden story about the Queen, and he gets he gets handled. Oh, handled. That's what he's getting. He's getting handled by his wife there. That is hilarious. I mean, everybody can understand that. Uh, Yeah, but also, I wonder. I'm curious what he was going to say. What was he joking about with the lizard queen? I want to know the joke. Yeah, I bet it was something about being old. Maybe or like Might have, maybe everyone's it was a gonna joke. think you're dead, and then you you'll come back as a little <laughs> little gecko. And I was, was joking, saying, "Isn't it funny how we're both holograms and not real?" <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that 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 was kind of funny. Um, Good times. Yeah. So so of course everyone is mourning. Others are showing their mean spirit. I suppose. Yep. Uh, lots of flavors out there regarding this, and of course you talk about. British royalty and there's there's lots of you know they, the Vice article mentioned the Anunnaki the old conspiracies about the Anunnaki but the, you know it goes pretty deep into you know Arthur and and all kinds of mythology yeah uh, but let's talk about the uh, the successor here yeah because, you know uh, mm-hmm. I was looking at this story this story goes really well with our Liz Trust section mm-hmm. but maybe we'll just we'll just let the through line play through yeah, the show yeah, yeah. It, it, okay. it continues on yeah, yeah. so uh, this is from the telegraph.co.uk and the headline is Prince Charles to launch Great Reset Project to Rebuild Planet in Wake of Coronavirus now, now, this was published in yeah. May of 2020 okay so all those people saying oh can, the, the, the Great Reset is just a just a random, you know, QAnon conspiracy. Q-Anspir- yeah, conspiracy theory. Well, the Telegraph um, said it in 2020. This is before it was really, it picked up steam in sort of an alt-mainstream way. Well, so, and this is a relevant article. May, we may have actually done this article. It yeah, we could have. Yeah, on the show at the time. But this is very relevant because, again, as the Queen's passing dominates everything, all headlines, all push notifications, all aggregated news lists. It's all about the Queen. One aspect of that is talking about Prince Charles, who is now King Charles III. What kind of leader will King Charles III be? People don't know about King Charles III. Some people like King Charles III. It's on and on and on and on. People wondering what to expect. And it's hilarious because it literally, he told us what he's about. Yeah. In 2020, in May of 2020. That's what I was like, going to say. It's two or three two months, months. Yeah, into the lockdowns and everything. Two months after coronavirus, the lockdown started, he comes out, Prince Charles, to launch Great Reset Project to rebuild planet in wake of coronavirus. He's a great reset uh, evangelist, if not, you know, literal king now of well, it's, making the Great Reset happen. It's interesting, too, because the header image here has Prince Charles talking at a podium, and there's some kind of... Uh, a, 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 logo. Uh, halo, yeah, it's a logo or something, but it's a halo shape, and it's kind of rainbow-colored. Yeah. So very... Uh, it's very interesting. Very woke. Yeah, and so, of course, we mentioned Liz Truss, and we'll get get on with some more Liz Truss stuff after the break. But Liz Truss appearing on the World Economic Forum, 
uh, website, mm-hmm. people wondering what King J- Charles III will be like. He literally told us at the beginning of the pandemic he was going to do a great reset. I mean, it's starting to line up quite well for old Klausi over there. Mm-hmm. I'll just read two paragraphs from that article from 2020 just to get an idea. The Prince of Wales will call on world leaders to capitalize on the, quote, unique but narrow window, end quote, to put, quote, planet and people first, end quote, in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic as he launches a, quote, unquote, great reset project. The prince is to co-host an event with the founder of the World Economic Forum to bring about a, quote, unquote, green recovery, encouraging businesses and politicians to ensure they, quote, build back better oh, good. as they cope with the repercussions of the COVID-19 crisis. Then it mentions Klaus Schwab and it goes into the whole thing. But yeah, I mean, it was straight up laid out in front of us um, in mainstream news articles like this from the Telegraph. So yeah. Uh, yeah. And that connection, I mean, the timing is incredible. Liz Truss becomes prime minister very next day. Queen passes, one Liz passes while one ascends, Mm -hmm. and uh, that leaves Liz Truss, WEF fan, (laughs) and King Charles III now promising to bring about the Great Reset. Yeah. And uh, with that, it's party time, baby. Is it party time already? I think it's party time. Oh, okay. Well, go to Canary Cry. Yeah. Yeah, Only already. an hour and a half into the show. Oh, feels like we just started. Go to canarycry.party. Do it. Put it in your URL. Party time. There you will find a website with a tree of links that uh, leads from everything from where to listen to the show, watch the show, how to produce the show, connect with us and the community. That's right. Lots of stuff over there. Go there. Canarycry.party. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can listen to Ravel, which is a podcast I do with Dr. Christopher Ryan Gates. Whew, I'm out of breath for some reason. <laughs> I think my, <laughs> my ice vest is a little tight. Uh, the, queen, yeah, the queen is uh, really she, she takes making my heart race. Away. Yeah. Um, where was I? Oh, Society, Scripture, and Scandal. That's Ravel. We have tough conversations in good faith. Go check it out. Lots of wonderful episodes. We have 50 episodes out now. We got another one coming up Sunday. Uh, yeah, go check it out. You can listen to it right there at CanaryCry.party or on your favorite podcast player. Uh, go subscribe to the Canary Cry Clips channel. All you YouTubers watching the show, head on over to Canary Cry Clips. It's this show for many episodes now being clipped out and uh, segmented out nice shareable careable bite-sized pieces of the show you can review information you can share information really a great resource uh and last but not least text the word canary to 877-740-3226 that's 877-740-3226 if you text canary to that number you'll be put on our text message alert system we'll just send out a text message before every show so you never miss one because Big Tech loves to not send out notifications for when we go live. So we're taking things into our own hands. People continue to sign up for that, and we highly recommend you do. And, uh, yeah, there you go. That's it. Let's thank some producers. It's oh. Break time. Hmm. We forgot you know, to we, do executive producers. We forgot producers. to do. Yeah, We I know. forgot to do executive producers. I know. All right, let's do it all right now. Yeah, we're going to take a quick break, folks, but don't go anywhere. I promise this will be fast. Uh, We're on the value for value model. What is that, you might say? Well, you might notice no advertisements, affiliate codes, no vitamins, supplements, nothing like that. No, we are entirely funded by listeners of this show, not corporations. Why in the world would you want a corporation to fund the show? Sure, maybe you don't have to take responsibility for your own uh, information flow. You don't have to uh, put value back into something that brings value to your life. You just sit back and let the corporate brainwashing wash over you right there in the middle. That's called advertisements. And uh, it's not good. It's not good for you. It's not good for us. It's not good for the world. 
this economy, this overwhelming force that is the advertising industry. Indeed, it's the justification for things like data mining and uh, you know big tech uh, censorship. They all do it. Their justification is advertising. We got to watch out for the advertisers. Yada yada yada. Well, if you cut advertisers out of the whole thing. Get corporations, corporate money out of there, which means corporate interests. What are you left with? You're left with those who get value out of the show, putting value back in. It's the only way that we can continue. And if you have never produced the show, you should really think about it. Uh, Because not only does it keep the show going, but it feels good. It's rewarding uh, to know that you are a part of of something, a part of what uh, keeps this show what it is. So if you get any value, think about it, pray about it, head on over to canarycryradio.com slash support. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Canarycryradio.com slash support. Yeah, indeed, indeed. That's the place to go. And uh, we usually start by thanking our executive producers. Yeah. Executive producers. That's right. Our executive producers are those producers, just like you, who support the show, but they do it in uh, a most generous fashion. They uh, carry a heavy load for the rest of the producers. We try to get at Hmm. least one exec in every show, uh, but sometimes that doesn't happen, Gons. And unfortunately, as of this exact moment... Although I should probably do a little refresh. Uh, As of this exact moment, no executive producers for this episode. Uh, I I must correct myself. Okay. The first QAnon post on 4chan was October 28th, 2017. And 1776 days. Yeah, you said November 5th. That's why I did the calculation. I didn't say it. Oh. Vice said it. Oh, Vice is telling the lie then. Vice well, is telling lies. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was October 28th, 2017 was when it first appeared on 4chan. And indeed, 1776 days is uh, September 8th. So Okay. Yeah. That's a big deal. Yeah. That is, a, that is too much of a coincidence. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That is something. Wow. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm glad we got that fixed. Yes. Okay, but mm-hmm. now you got to play the sad noise because we don't have any executive producers. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. There you go. No execs. Although there is still time. If somebody wants to be our knight in shining armor, they can head on over to canarycryradio.com slash support. Become an executive producer. Oh, you're not uh, there on video. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's okay. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know why. You there we go. Now I'm back. Now you're back. Um, yeah. Uh, that would be very helpful. That would be nice on on a Friday. Let's get let's do it, baby. Uh, but we got some more producers to thank, and we'll thank them right now. Ready, guns? Ready. Okay, I'm not ready. I'm not there. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we're really <laughs> sloppy today. I know. I don't know what happened. I was there, and then I wasn't there. Okay, mm. now I'm here. Here we go. We're going to start out by thanking Sir Morv, Knights of the Burning Chariots, who's on a 137 episode streak. That's right. Comes in with the 1111. No note. Thank you, Sir Moore. Thank you, Sir Moore. Mm-hmm. Next up, we've got Jason F. Jason F. F. Jason F. Comes in with the 1111. Thank, Thank you very Jason. much, Jason F. Appreciate it. Next up, we got Brian. No, oh, yeah, Brian B. Brian B. Thank you. Yeah, it comes in with nine dollars and nine cents, nine oh nine. Fun. Oh, maybe first September ninth. Mm, yeah. uh, and a note that says, "I botched my last joke about what was an Italian Jesuit's favorite food being a pasta." See, uh, that's okay. pretty good. That's, that is pretty good. Bad, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. I don't know if you botched it last time. So let's try a new one. Okay. What is a Jesuit doctor's favorite exam? Oh, I don't like where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> a prostate. Mm. Mm. Like a pasta, get it? Mm. But I'm yeah. not a huge fan of the Jesuits here. <laughs> As a bonus, what a relig- what religion has the most evil guitarists? Ooh, I don't know. Oh. Who's, who's the evil? Yeah, who is that? I don't know. Catholics. Oh, because guitar licks, players play guitar licks. licks. Oh, yeah, okay. okay, the Catholics. All right, All right. All right Brian. That you just sounds got... like a a good a good uh, band name, Catholics. <laughs> You know, some, sure. Some, some, some. That's for free, folks. <laughs> Thank you very much, Brian B. Thank you, Brian B. 
appreciate it. Next up, we've got Sir LX Protocol V2 Night of the Berean Protocol, 73 episodes in a row. Almost to that 77, the perfection. Yeah, came, yeah. And came in with a pocket full of sevens. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Alex Protocol. Next up, we got Sir JC Knight of the Techno Squatch on a 144 episode streak. Call in the street. Best thing on 144 jingle. And it came straight from the heart. 144 in a row. Bottom. Good job. 1001. Amen. Good job. Yes, the 1001. Thank you, Sir JC. Once again, this is the note. Once again, we have made it to this day. Happy Friday, everyone. It's Friday. Thank you, Sir JC. Night of the Techno Squatch. Indeed. Next up, we got Sir Darren, Night of the Hungry Pandas. 42 episodes in a row. Three. Carry this message to Hiram a bit. You have reached perfection. Thank you very much, Sir Darren. Pocket full of sevens and fees says, Thank goodness it's Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. Continues, there was a wildfire near where I work, and we got evacuated because of it. Ooh. But it's all good now, and I'm ready for the weekend. Hope everyone has a great day. Number 42. Thank you very much, Sir Darren. Thank you, Sir Darren. And I, I see Sir Darren, uh, Knight of the Hungry Pandas, uh, displaying the Knight of the Hungry Pandas in his handle on social mm-hmm. media and stuff. And I, I think that's the direction we need to go here with uh, more of our producers and Indeed. knights and dames. We need to see you on social media. And that's where, um, you know, the NFT game comes in and you got, you can sport oh. some uh, PFPs as the, as the kids go. call it, you know, here we go. and yeah. uh, that'll be a thing that will probably roll out. I don't know, 2027 when everybody okay. else is doing it. <laughs> there you go. But there you go. Thank you very much. You know, it's a harsh, a harsh Friday, Guns. Mm. One, two, three, four, five, six producers yeah. over seven dollars, and most of that was right around seven dollars. Uh, four out of the six producers are knights of the Canary Cry Roundtable of knights and dames. Yeah. That's why. That's why they deserve it. It's mm. because uh, they're coming in when nobody else will. Yeah. Six producers. A little oh, yeah, brutal. That's pretty low, huh? That's, a little that's surprising. A, a, that must be a man. I wonder if it follows the Bitcoin market or something. <laughs> I wonder. It must be following something. Maybe everybody's too sad about the queen. Uh, the queen <laughs> throwing money at the royalty because they need yeah. it. You know. Yeah. Something. Um, let me do. Let me see if somebody's coming in right now because if they are, they're helping us out. Okay. There we go. Oh, that's nice. All right. Don't worry, guns. <laughs> Your kids can eat this weekend. Yay. <laughs> Glad I refreshed that. That was starting to get disappointing. Okay, here we go. We had uh, two execs come in. Ooh. Just now. Just at this wow. moment. Wow, okay. God bless you guys. Uh, okay, uh, we're starting off with executive producer Maureen M. Comes in again. 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 Nice round number. Thank you very much, Maureen M. And that puts Maureen M., on an executive producer street. Oh my gosh, do I even yeah. have that? Re- I don't even know if I have that ready. We will wait. Okay. We, All right. I have a, my finger on a button, which makes it incredibly difficult and challenging to do this. Give button. me one second. I'm gonna Can you imagine folks having your that. finger on a button? <laughs> that, somebody that, that wasn't uh, that was supposed to play. Saves the day. Yeah. And uh, we got to find a different button to thank <laughs> them for saving the day. Button. Can you even imagine yeah. the sort of hardships that this is causing on the does back she, end of the Does show. she have a, uh, a note or anything? To I No, I did not see time. a note. I can check the email, see if an email Let's came see. in. Okay. Oh. No, no, no email. lots of emails, but not from her, no. Let's see. Uh, no, 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 no. That's none. not the one. Hmm. You don't have this just like ready, huh? Uh, well, it's right here. Uh, 
I'm glad we terrified Marina. <laughs> that was a crazy jingle. I forgot how insane that was. Well, thank you very much, executive producer Maureen M, for coming in, saving the day there. Yeah, I appreciate uh, that. We, oh, we hold also on. hold on. Okay. Properly. Thank you, Maureen M. Where'd you find this? There we go. Now I feel better. Thank yeah. you, Maureen. We also have had another executive producer come in, saving the day. It is uh, executive producer Rochelle S. Oh, thank you, Rochelle S. I was afraid you were going to say Rochelle Walensky, and I was going to. Ah, Rochelle W. Yeah, Both. she's she hasn't Be produced excited. in a while. Yeah. Ever, ever since we started covering her, <laughs> uh, Rochelle S. comes in um, with one hundred dollars and thirty-seven cents. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, I don't know how. I'm not exactly sure what that means. And it must or maybe it was a whoopsie daisies on the fees or something. Uh, but that's what it is. Thank you very much. Executive producer, Rochelle S. Where'd you find this? Okay. The ladies coming take... through. Ladies. Women yes. rule. Women rule. Women They're rule. keeping this show going. We yeah. appreciate it very much. Yeah. All right. That concludes our list of uh, producers who came in in the amount of $7.77 or more, uh, which entitles them to have a note read on the show. We get a few who came in under that. We'll think later on in the show. Uh, but other than that, thank you for your patronage. Shut up and take my money. Thank you for your patronage. Thank you for your patronage. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your patronage. Oh, yes. It's wake-up time. Yeah, hold on. Wake up. Hold on one Uh second. Rochelle S. is in the chat. Okay. And she says, the 37 was not a whoopsies. She says, look up 37. Like Google the number 37? Yes. I did just put in what does 37 mean i'm just putting in 37 in my so search see what pops up engine. in 37 yeah. okay we're gonna get oh, it's number a movie th- oh it's a well, okay directed by i don't think Puke that's graston <laughs> okay uh oh, the well, smallest prime number is also not a singular the smallest prime number that's something yeah okay we, i've got a few different things here from uh a numerology website <laughs> sure. says uh, 37 is a do-it-yourself kind of number, uh-huh. highly independent, creative number, uh, exploring entirely new things, ideas, locations, methods. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, oh, here's, like here's this. Plus 37 was the international dialing code for the German Democratic Republic. So she's, uh, she's a Nazi. <laughs> you don't. I can't. I'm, j- I'm joking. Gonzo. <laughs> It's no, the, the absurdum. Okay. I'm over here at another numerology place here. Okay, like your numerology thing is any better? Oh, I'm than- just searching. <laughs> we'll explain all the meanings. There's a blend of it. Blah 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 blah. Uh-huh. blah. There's there's a there's a guidance, so guidance and encouragement to carry on the path. Okay, that's uh-huh. encouraging. Sure. It certainly was encouraging. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, it was. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Okay, this is a long one. Well done. I think this case. So that's all nice. Rochelle, if you had a very special one. Oh, she says here, three is triune God, seven, number of completion. Booyah. There Love. you go. Thank you very much. All right. That the mystery has been solved. Great. Yes. And we're very appreciative. And you know, so if I offended you with my, my joke, and it's a foreshadow of what's to come in the show. That's kind of oh, why no. I said it. More, more Nazi jokes coming. It's okay. We understand. I'm, yeah. Well, it's not right, me let's saying wake up. it, but uh, let's talk about Liz Sirds. Liz yes, it's wake up time. Hey, y'all, wake up! I, as Prime Minister, will take immediate action. I will take action to put our nation on the ground. I will take action this day and action every day. As we say in politics, when people are starting to get bored of a message, it's just when you need to start repeating it even more. <laughs> It's Latin for many. Politics. I think yeah. Liz Truss came from the Kamala Harris school of politics. Yeah, probably. Makes yeah. sense. Uh, this is abc.net.au. It's the Australian ABC. Okay. And uh, they have a headline here. Conspiracists have named new UK Prime Minister Liz Truss in their theory about the World Economic Forum's Great Reset. What are the facts? 
Ooh, what okay. are the facts? So we just presented Al the uh, the new king. It was all about the Great Reset before everybody was freaking out about it in the alt media. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's see what this says. Let's see. Hold on. Where, where's what's, uh, what, what is going on here with this article? Well, the editor's note. Okay, checkmate. Yeah. All right. This week, checkmate. Oh, okay. This week, checkmate delves into the Great Reset, a long-running conspiracy theory. Oh, yeah. Is it now? Okay. That has reared its head in response to the swearing in of Britain's new prime minister. We also take aim at two COVID-19 vaccine-related issues. Okay, good. Uh, As Liz Truss was being sworn in as the UK's fourth conservative prime minister in a decade, some social media users invoked a long-running and far-reaching conspiracy theory to suggest her appointment to the top job formed part of a sinister global ploy. Quote, confirmed, Liz Truss will be the next WEF, that's World Economic Forum, representative in charge of administering their agenda in the UK. End quote. One widely shared tweet suggested. (laughs) Okay. Mm -hmm. As evidence of her supposed ties to the international lobby group, uh, other online posts pointed to a screenshot of the forum's website showing a photo of Miss Truss alongside her former job title as a UK Justice Secretary. Yeah, which is a we, thing we showed. We did yes. find that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not However, the screenshot. We found the actual thing. Yeah, the, the actual website. However, the new PM's ties to the WEF are tenuous at best, okay. and allegations that she is a member, quote unquote, of the forum are incorrect. Hmm. Okay. okay, and we will learn why. Mm-hmm. As the WEF's website outlines, and that that little phrase is hyperlinked to the wef website members are not individuals rather they are firms and businesses oh okay 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 members are not so there i the only way i can so, understand this is that so there is no not individuality a, in the world economic forum you are only yes. part of the hive mind collective it's the stakeholders you have to be a corporation to be a member of the world economic forum mm. we know this we've known this for a long time yeah and while so it forum, sounds like he's just getting nitpicky on what a pretty, member pretty means. nitpicky for sure there and while the forum is governed by both a managing board and board of trustees miss truss does not sit nor has ever sat on either of these boards. Yeah, okay. okay. She has, however, previously taken part in the forum's annual summit in Davos, Switzerland. <laughs> okay. Where thousands of quote unquote leaders and experts from around the world gather to discuss global issues. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, okay. she's she's not a corporation, so she can't be a <laughs> member. I mean, yeah, she goes to the party and she speaks at the events and she's friends with everybody who's there, but you know, she can't be a member. I think this that's is not a- how how it works. I think this is called a straw man. In 2021, Ms. Truss, who at the time was the UK Secretary of State for Foreign, Commonwealth, and Development Affairs, appeared on a virtual panel to discuss, quote, fixing the international oh, trade she system. She speaks on the panels. Oh, yeah, she speaks on the she... panel. It's, it's linked to the World but Economic Forum. But she's not Forum. a member. This appears to be the only time that she has participated in the Davos Summit. And there's a parenthetical, at least in an official government capacity. Oh, uh, and we're even leaving the door open <laughs> that she goes for personal reasons, for recreational purposes, not just for her job. And is her only connection with the WEF that Checkmate has been able to establish. Okay. Mm, okay. Well, Great. other okay, than so the direct checkmate. website of the World Economic Forum having a little bio page L- with no text her. on there. Yeah. The appearance, however, has been enough to stir up suggestions she is part of a conspiracy known as quote unquote the great reset it's not a conspiracy how many times you got to yell that i know it's crazy in recent years the wef and its founder german economist klaus schwab have become central players in this theory it's not a theory it's their own marketing uh, which as the institute for strategic dialogue isd has explained is in reality more of a quote loose group of conspiracy theories Oh, is that right? The Institute of Strategic Dialogue has claimed it to be a, a loose grouping of conspiracy theories. 
Oh, my gosh. No, gee. Quote, the core theme, however, is that Schwab and the WEF are acting as a Machiavellian hidden hand, orchestrating COVID-19 lockdowns and other public health measures in order to achieve their own sinister goals. End quote. The ISD said in a May research report published yeah. as part of it. You know, why aren't we being they paid the, to publish research? Are we we're doing, we're doing, do they put do they put the actual quote from Klaus Schwab when he says COVID nineteen is an <laughs> opportunity for a great reset? Well, and, they, and the king, the new king of England, of course, the literally king of England, saying yes. in a quote. Unique of a unique and narrow window to put people on planet first in the wake of the coronavirus as he launches a uh, launches a great reset project. Yeah, I don't know. These, uh, yeah, these, okay. Crazy. So this is this is for the the peons who just need to read something from someone to just not be well, scared. They're hoping and they don't read too far into it because it does say here first advanced by the WEF and Professor Schwab in 2020, the Great Reset is indeed a real vision for a post-pandemic transformation of capitalism. <laughs> 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 though though it consists mostly of broad and imprecise ideas rather than concrete uh, plans. Not according to the actual book if you read Schwab's yeah. book, it's pretty specific. Yeah. They don't know ex- anything that they're As talking about. As writer Naomi Klein pointed out in an article for The Intercept in 20 Ooh, they're quoting The Intercept. The plan is similar to previous visions put forward by the WEF. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, right. this guy's got an easy job over here at, what is this, ABC? ABC Net? AU, yeah. ABC.net.au, checkmate, your inoculation against misinformation. Yeah, I mean, she's not a member. I mean, she's friends and goes to <laughs> she, things she's and speaks on, on the, the website. <laughs> and does the whole thing and is on the website. But the Great Reset is just a conspiracy theory, a crazy conspiracy theory about how COVID is going to be used to, to change global uh, the global world order. I mean, it is a plan put out by Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum in order to change the world in their own vision after COVID. But, I mean, it's not crazy. It's a very, very... Uh, good example of how easy it is it's a good example of one or both of two things how easy it is to <laughs> convince someone who wants to be convinced yeah. if they want to fit in they want the world to be as they've been told. They want to be a part of the collective. They want to be told this, and they want to believe it. Yeah. This is this is literally the tickling the of e- the ears. The, the easiest thing in the world is to convince yeah. someone of something that they want to be convinced of, yeah, and well, that's that's why it's so unconvincing when you actually read it. Or the other side of it is. They just literally think we're the stupidest beings on the planet, that we can literally have them describe it as the thing they are saying it is not. And, and uh, just know, take them at their word. At this point, you know, with the coming out of the QAnon conversation, I really think a lot of this is meant for the... The, the the uprising of the the counterparty the the revolution you know because they make it so obvious that it's hard to it's hard to it, not you to t- rebuttal it you know what i mean it's it's you so feel easy. like you're taking crazy pills exactly yeah. and um i don't know it's it's you know we try to at least present all sides you know but presenting well, at least understand or understand at least understand yeah. you know it's it's important not to straw man uh, in in fact, it's it's a virtue, I think, to steel man the opposite argument. Ooh, steel However, man, yeah, yeah. Steel man, yeah. If you can take down the steel man, then yeah, you're really especially, strong. Especially, exactly, especially when, unfortunately, so many other alt outlets or alternative media or whatever uh, do are mostly straw manning things. Yeah. And it's really easy to do and it's really popular to do. It's really easy to sort of understand and latch on to and, and build a worldview around. Um, it's much harder to not straw man uh, the, the opposition. And it's also more tedious and less popular mm-hmm. and, and less emotionally triggering, which makes it 
which certainly is part of what hinders this show, is the emotional tediousness of trying to figure out uh, what's really going on. Some people on. get mad that we laugh at this stuff all the time, but, you know. They don't like it. They, they don't, don't like, like that it we're laughing at, at it. But, you yeah. know, uh, to that point, you know, it, it, there are some outlets that are trying to present both sides uh-huh. uh, accurately. Uh, okay. But that's not something that... Um, uh, Medhi Hassan thinks is a good idea. He's, uh, I think he has a show on MSNBC, uh, yeah, and NBC. He had a quote here from. I uh, got a couple clips of him here talking on the uh, the Knight Foundation, the K N I G H T Knight. He's a he's a knight of some kind of round table, maybe a. Uh, Not not, not Canary Cry for sure, but somewhere. And uh, he said these words. There are two words we need to remove from our media vocabulary right now, and that is both sides. This fundamental crutch, this reliance on both sides as a kind of lazy way of covering our political moment is deeply dangerous. There are a bunch of major issues in which there are not both sides. There are not both sides on climate change. There are not both sides on white supremacy. There are not both sides on democracy. Ben, there are not both sides on the Holocaust. I mean, we live in America where in South Lake, (laughs) Texas school district, an administrator is on tape. My colleagues at NBC News got the recording telling teachers, if you give a kid a book about the Holocaust, you need to give them a book with the opposing view. What is the opposing view on the Holocaust? So there are not both sides. Right, and that is obvious. That is obvious. That is obvious. That is obvious. I like even the guy <laughs> moderating the conversation is like, okay, okay, we don't need to bring the Holocaust into this. That is obvious. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, by the way, a wonderful example of reductio ad Hitlerum, which is uh, sort of a tongue in cheek uh, rhetorical fallacy. Uh, reductio ad Hitlerum. You could almost just, I don't need to define it for you, but it's, uh, it's a form jump of an the- ad. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. It's a form yeah, of yeah. an ad hominem, ad mis- uh, misericordian, or a fallacy of irrelevance. Wow. Yeah, Suggested rationale card. is one of it's- guilt by association. Yeah. An attempt to invalidate someone else's position on the basis that the same view was held by Adolf Hitler or the Nazi party. Arguments can correctly be called reductio ad Hitlerum if they are fallacious, e.g. arguing that, and then it goes on. So, you get the point. If you start bringing up Hitler, and I think by extension the Holocaust, you are using a rhetorical device. That is meant to shut down any conversation. And here he is, a, an elite member of the mainstream media, straight up saying, no, no, we don't give two sides of things. Now, look, I'm not even fully invested in the media being required to present both sides of something. Simply just the facts, you know, mm-hmm. just just do the facts. Well, yeah, I, and that is the problem, especially in his climate change yeah, uh, example. example, is they will present certain scientific data that supports climate change, and they will ignore certain scientific data that it does not validate the popular opinion. That is not asking for both sides of an argument. That's simply asking for the all available facts. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, there you go. He's a wonderful representative of the mainstream media, even more so the legacy mainstream media, uh, thinking that it's it's not their job to present facts or yeah. some sort of, you know, arguments or something. It is simply their job to disseminate the accepted information. Mm. Or, or the the information or the the sentiment that they want the public to adhere to um yeah. or their advertisers oh, and that's or what I'm their saying. yeah I was, the other yeah. part was going to be that he, what he's really saying is if you really want clicks you gotta you gotta pick the the thing and then push it you know because you can say the same thing from the other side of the argument you know, the aisle yeah. the anti-climate people you gotta you gotta take a side there's no both sides um right. Or you present the other side to tear down, right? So this guy here, this guy interviewing uh, Medhi Hassan here, kind of gives an example of, uh, what about uh, this issue? It was like a more benign issue. And then yeah. Medhi accuses him of straw manning. <laughs> oh, does he? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I cut that part out because I didn't know that there was going to be a theme coming up. But Medhi continues with uh, his example based on his uh, the pushback from the host here. For example, what should the corporate tax rate be? 
I think that's a perfectly legitimate debate to have. Right. What should the level be? Of course, there's both sides on that. Right. Okay. But on the big issues of our time, on whether people should be able to vote, on whether people should be able to get to a ballot box, on whether uh, a one party should be able to overturn an election, no, there's not both sides. On whether you know QAnon, which is now dominating, which the leader of the Republican Party is now endorsing the idea that America is run by a cabal of media pedophiles. Yeah, there's no both sides. I don't on think there are both sides on that one. I yeah. Don't, I, I, this guy. All right. There's not both sides on if our corporate elite is run has has at least pedophile pedophilic tendencies. That's interesting. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, interesting that he would bring up QAnon as part of, part of like at oh, first he yeah. brings up Hitler and then he brings up QAnon. Right. He, he just goes straight, straight to the most the jugular man. Yeah. The, <laughs> The most inflammatory examples of things. Yeah. Yeah. That's hilarious. Um, you know, I got this cat I got to let out. We have sure. another story here. Do you want to start on this while I Real disappear quick. for one second? Yeah, I don't think we should spend too much time on it, but this is from the dailymail.co.uk. And the headline here, Steve Bannon is paraded through New York court in handcuffs. All caps. Paraded? Paraded. Oh, they threw him a parade. <laughs> Perk walk. Um, I'm just going to read the bullet points here to get to the point. Bannon is, Bannon is expected to be released on no cash bail and surrender his passport. Bannon has handed himself over to authorities in New York State where he is expected to face fraud charges over his We Built the Wall charity scheme. Anytime you use the word scheme, it makes it sound worse instead of just charity. It's a scheme. And when you really look at the definition of a scheme, every every fundraising or charity has a scheme behind it. But OK, David Schuen, who represented Trump in his second impeachment trial, will represent Bannon in court. Bannon was arranged Thursday for, uh, before state Supreme Court Judge Juan Mercan in Manhattan and pleaded not guilty. So there you go. That's uh, a little bit. And there's some pictures here of Bannon. uh Doing his little perk walk. Doesn't look too crazy or anything like that. He's smiling in this photo op in court. A couple of police officers on either side. Uh, handcuffed. You know, his hands behind his back, handcuffed. Nice little photo op. This screams a you know sort of a Trumpian virtue signal type of deal. Where it's kind of a... You know, a, a victim. Vic- victimhood. Yeah, yeah like the a martyrdom. martyr. Yeah, martyrdom type of um, deal. And, I mean, the reason that he's getting booked is actually pretty interesting. And I think, did they, I'm sorry, I went and let, let the cat out. Did did you talk about why he's being booked well, I here? I just read the bullet points, which was that, uh, yeah, the bullet point says that it's because he, uh, the, expected the weed, fraud charges over the We Built the Wall charity scheme. And I put right, it was the GoFundMe. Yeah. It's the GoFundMe where Trump supporters added to the GoFundMe to build the wall themselves. Right, they were going right, to build, right, right. they were going to buy private land and build their own wall. And they raised a bunch of money, I think $15 million. And then suddenly all the people who were sort of running the thing, had new yachts, had new houses, had new I'm on stuff. a boat. Uh, this is we're living pretty large. And yeah, it was a little it was a little sneaky. Now I don't know exactly what Bannon's um you know role in it was. I think I think that his thing was like he was just giving it Trump cred. Is you know, if Bannon's on there, then you know it's sort of Trump endorsed type of thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the actual allegation is. It's uh, money like laundering, how- it's two counts, uh, right. money laundering, uh, three counts of conspiracy, and one count of scheming to defraud. Yeah, I, I'm just wondering what he po- oh, it says right here, uh, it says he allegedly pocketed around one million dollars. Okay, well. one million doesn't seem like enough for old Bannon there. Well. He's already a millionaire, isn't he? Uh, probably. I would well, imagine so. He's okay. hanging out with the right crowd to be a millionaire. That's yeah. For sure. Now, he was trying to make, uh, he and his lawyers were making a bunch of, I I read a ton of articles on this, unfortunately. They were all incredibly <laughs> boring. Um, and there was really nothing in there. I don't, not, I don't know, I'm not really a fan of Bannon or something or anything. Uh, but they were, his whole case was like, 
or his whole plea was that this was politically motivated and it was, you know, a, a hit job and da, 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 da. not really rebuking the actual charges, charges yeah. you know, well, uh, yeah, is, I took a million, but that's because we raised 10. He's yeah. He didn't even say any of that. I don't yeah, think, yeah. Um, or at least it wasn't reported on. So, Anywho, oh. that's what happens when you scam people uh, and take their money and say you're going to do something and then don't do it. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's an issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, it mentions Jared Kushner down here, and I'll take the opportunity, Basil. Uh, you didn't hear Jared Kushner? I did, I missed it. I was gone you, when this. You, you you didn't go back and and listen to that moment when he. Uh, Hans, you know how this show himself. works. We have got to keep moving forward. I cannot go back. <laughs> <laughs> you you were very surprised that I had not heard this clip while okay. I was in my long, dark <laughs> night of the soul yeah. out in the desert there. You're out in the desert. Yeah. Uh, I'll play it for you here. This is just isolated um, right. from a, a re- recent interview that uh, Jared Kushner did. Oh, I just had it. Where did it go? Uh, here we go. My generation is hopefully with the advances in science, the first generation to live forever or the last generation that's going to die. Oh, oh, it sounds like he's on that uh, 2045 tip. Mm-hmm. Going to live pretty, forever. Pretty straightforward there. His, so this it say his generation was the last that was going to die. My generation is hopefully with the advances in science, the first generation to live forever or the last generation that's going to die. Uh, interesting. Oh, mm-hmm. the the last, either the first, the first to live forever. Yeah, okay, either or. Got it. Or yeah. the last to die. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he's a billionaire weirdo, man. That's what they do. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Not let him publish books, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. Give me a break. <laughs> It's time for a break. Let's do a couple speak pipes here. Please leave a message after the tone. 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 At the tone, please record your message. Leave a message. Beep. Message. That's right. Head on over to CanaryCryNewsTalk.com. On the bottom or the right-hand side, you'll see your green tab. Click on that green tab, and you can leave us a voicemail message. You're given us permission to play the message, but it's not guaranteed. All Any right. messages? Yeah, we got a couple here. First one from Nomen Prunte. Nomen Prunte here. Shout out to my Coeur d'Alene crew. I miss you guys. Coeur d'Alene. So, whether you're dealing with a California neighborhood or having to justify your ministry to at burning man yeah, sounds or familiar. whether this poem title alludes to your dame or night name this is for you it's the shadow mm. the slightest sunlight accosts my senses trees canopies are my picket fences i walk in the shadow as long as murder stalks a city street and morning clouds the faces that I meet. I walk in the shadow. Life in the cave is perpetual night. To bring the captives out into the light, I walk in the shadow. He straightened all that was bent and broken, breathed every truth that was ever spoken. I walk in his shadow. There you go. Cool. Ooh, I like it. I, I, like, like, it. I like how it develops. You know. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. I, I I was gonna try to attempt to pronounce this name again. Do you remember what it was? Nomen Prunte. Nomen Prunte. Coeur d'Alene crew. Thank mm-hmm. you very much. Thank you. All right. We also have one from Rochelle. <laughs> T-G-I-F. So, my love of music and math is about to collide. You guys probably won't understand this next song unless you're a mathematician Bible scholar. Yeah, not many of those. Anyway, I'll explain Monday, so tune in. But if you can't wait, Google the four-digit numbers and follow the rabbit trail. Genesis 1-1, the sun... 2701, I'm done. 
Seven is the perfect complete, but three's got you beat. Thirty-seven times seventy-three makes a perfect triangle. You see, Genesis one two about you. Thirteen sixty-nine the vine. Thirty-seven times thirty-seven. A perfect triangle to take you to heaven. Genesis one four, the door. Seventeen seventy six, the fix. Thirty seven times forty eight, the perfect triangle to open the gate. Twenty seven o one, I'm done. Thank you guys. Stay strong for Jesus. I love this show. Thank you, Thank Rochelle. you very much, Rochelle. Uh, that must be our executive producer, Michelle. Rochelle. Uh, Michelle. Rochelle. Sorry. Uh, cons- yeah. I mean, it, it numbers, man. Makes, numbers, man. I, well, if it's not, then it must be must be biblical. But oh, if it is, see. then it makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. A lot of good numbers. Thank you very numbers. much. Yeah. Thank you very much, Rochelle. I appreciate that. Uh, all right. You got some... Uh, Any other voicemails? That's All it? good? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. We just got a few more people to thank who came in under the 777 cutoff, and I will do that now, starting no. with Runk Smash. Runk Smash. 28 episodes in a row. 28. Thank you, Runk Smash. Uh, we got Gail M, 168 episodes in a row. Her. We got Veronica D, 168 episodes in a row. Her. You know, they're approaching, before you go on, they're they're, Uh they're approaching the the Space Cowboy 177. Yes. But uh, they're ladies. You know? Mm -hmm. The jingle of Space Cowboy. Uh We got got a couple cowgirls getting to that 177. I'm just throwing that out there. He's throwing it out there. Mm-hmm. There you go. Uh, Sir Scott, Knight of Truth, 192 oh. episodes in a row. Thank you, Sir Scott. Sir Casey the Shield Knight, 203 episodes in a row. And that does it. That concludes our list of financial producers. Thank you guys so, so much. And remember, folks, the value for value model, uh, and there's all sorts of ways to put value back in. Your time, your treasure, or your talent. We'll be thanking some of our uh, very talented producers in the next break. Uh, but uh, just keep in mind, it does. there's innumerable ways to bring value to the show, to participate, and uh, to play a hand in not just the survival, but the thrival of the show. Thrival. Hmm. Thrival Hmm, is a word that I just made up. Uh, So thank you very much to all of our producers. Yeah, I appreciate it. Ready to wake up? Uh, yeah, and we got to say goodbye to YouTube, else. I think, right? Oh, are, are we gonna, yeah. What are we doing? Uh, let me look. Let me look. Let me look. Da, 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 da. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Unfortunately, the stories today uh, regarding COVID and monkeypox and the whack genes thereof uh, are not suitable for Facebook no, or Facebook or YouTube. Too hot for YouTube. So, YouTubers. Out there, most of you are watching on YouTube right now. I uh, First of all, I'd recommend you head on over to CanaryCry.party. CanaryCry.party. Find another outlet to watch the show. I would recommend, uh, if you want your chat to be on screen, the one to join would be the DLive channel. That is DLive.tv slash Canary Cry News Talk. I'm going to post that uh, link in the chat for you. So you can just click right on over and join in uninterrupted. You can also catch the show on Rumble and Odyssey, um, but those chats do not make it onto the feed uh, for reasons that we have no control over. Uh, And remember, the Twitch is still suspended. Mm -hmm. That is very sad. Um, But keep an ear out. We might do a backup situation over there. Yeah, and for those of you on YouTube, you're going to want to definitely check this one out. You know, not that at any other time you should. It is a good one. We do have some pretty important sort of 
the data. YouTubers we seem have, we to have be sauce. We have hot sauce. Yes, yes, the YouTube viewers kind of seem to be plagued with a sort of apathy that when uh, when we need to turn off the YouTube stream, very few of them make it over to the other stream. Um, but this is going to be one you're going to want to check out. We've got some and lovers yes, and haters some... alike, especially for Basil. If you're like a Basil hater, definitely uh -huh. want to check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Yeah. I don't. Yep. I don't. Yep. <laughs> Just right. Take Gonza's word for that one. Okay. Here we go. We're too hot for YouTube. Bye, YouTube. Yes, it's wake up time. Hey, y'all, wake up. Okay, it's Odyssey, Twitter, Facebook, whatever it is, you can find all those links at canarycry.party as well. Too hot for YouTube. YouTube. Now you see me. Now you don't. Mm hmm. All right. Say bye bye to the YouTubies. Sorry to 